What's up everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'll be launching a new series that focuses on restoring this 89 Chevy S10 extended cab. Pretty soon I'll be wrapping up the series on my 93 GMC Jimmy. It's been an awesome journey so far with so much support. I really appreciate it. It just makes me even more excited to pass the torch, so to speak, from the Jimmy over to the S10. Something that's a little different, but also familiar and something that we can have a lot of fun with. Don't worry, more Jimmy content is on its way. I'll keep you guys posted on when to expect future videos through all of the social platforms. Thank you so much for your patience. This has been one whirlwind of a summer, let me tell you, between life in general and my wife and I building our house and the fact that I just have way too many projects going on. It's been a little difficult to juggle everything, but I'm making my way through and I've been really, really looking forward to diving into this truck. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. There's no denying that I've become quite fond of these trucks over the last couple of years. They're simple, easy to work on, and they're somewhat fun to drive. There's a lot of things you can do to them. I bought this truck back in May to eventually be the substitute for the Jimmy when that series started to wind down. I came across it purely by accident. If you remember, last year I bought a 93 S10 regular cab that I had hoped to make a project series out of, but when I started diving further into it, I realized it was a little more work than I was wanting to tackle at that time, so I just put that truck aside, and just every now and then I would search around to see if I can find a replacement for it. I was driving through the country one day and just happened to stop by this random dealership that had this truck sitting at the very back of the lot. It didn't run, the battery was dead, I was told it was you know, a possible fuel issue or timing issue, but I don't know. It was 700 bucks, the body has no rot, so I was like, score! <laughs> Plus, it's red on red, it's kind of my thing. So I picked this thing up, turns out it was a fairly simple fix, but to get it fully running and driving as it needs to be. There's still a little bit more work that needs to be done and that's what we're gonna do in this video. By a little bit of work, I actually mean a lot of work because I have to kick things off by replacing the fuel sending unit which is not a fun thing to do in these trucks. Because the sending unit goes in the top of the tank, the proper way to do it is to drop the tank. I've actually seen people cut holes in the bed to make it easier to get to that sending unit without taking the tank out. We're not doing that, <laughs> but <laughs> because I have the lift to make things a lot easier, I'm gonna be a little excessive, I guess, and just take the bed off the frame because it'll make it a lot easier for me to film this video and I can knock out a bunch of stuff that I'm wanting to do back here all at once. While I'm in the midst, I'm gonna replace the tank, the filler neck, and all of the hoses. A huge thanks to the folks at my local O'Reilly Auto Parts for helping me get all of the right equipment in order. So, let's go ahead and fire this up and show you what's going on. Again, when I bought the truck, it wasn't running and the battery was dead. I couldn't check anything out, so it was a risk, but the truck was in phenomenal shape for 700 bucks, so I thought it was a risk worth taking. Turns out, to get it to fire, all it needed was new spark plugs, a new cap and rotor, and the timing needed to be set. Once I got it running, though, it wouldn't stay running without feathering the gas pedal, so that led me to a fuel issue. Instead of replacing the fuel pump or the whole sending unit like I'm going to, somebody in the past had wired in an aftermarket inline fuel pump that sits right underneath the cab. Now that pump had failed also, so it's probably got some bad gas, but I put in another inline pump just temporarily off of a toggle switch to see if it was a fueling issue, and I got it to fire up and run pretty good. too bad. This truck is powered by the 4.3 liter throttle body injected V6 paired to a 700 R4 four speed automatic transmission. The thing seems pretty solid. I looked at it underneath. There's no oil leaks or anything like that. It definitely needs an oil change and some other maintenance items, but all things considered, 700 bucks? You can't beat that.
With the battery disconnected, we can get the truck up in the air. It's really easy to take the bed off one of these things. The wire harness that ties in all of the rear lights is connected through the left side frame rail. You don't have to disconnect everything, which is nice. You can undo the main harness for the bed, like the tail lights, backup lights, and whatnot. There's a few wire holders you have to take off and you have to pop out the license plate lights. Basically anything that ties the bed to the frame. The vast majority of stuff is gonna come off with the bed. With all of the wires out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and drop the spare tire. The hoist assembly is mounted to the cross member that spans the frame rails, but the handle that you twist back and forth to lower or raise the tire assembly sticks through the bed at the back. There's a little plastic grommet that prevents it from flopping around. By dropping this whole assembly, I can also give it a thorough cleaning and lube everything up inside so it operates nice and smoothly if I need to use it later on. The bed is held to the frame by six bolts. Two at the front, right behind the cab, two right behind the shock absorbers, and two at the rear of the frame. The last two things I have to do before the bed can come off is undo a couple bolts that hold the fuel filler neck to the side of the bed and undo the ground strap underneath. All right, let's try to pick up this bed. Like I said, I'm gonna be using the lift. I have the arms positioned at each corner as level as possible with two by fours to help evenly distribute the weight. Well, that worked out quite nice. One thing I want to point out, I didn't think of it until I was in the moment, but the bed started to catch the fuel filler neck as it was coming past it, so I had to reach in and just tuck it off to the side. Just something to be aware of if you're going to be doing something similar. I see a handful of opportunities for content here, so I want to get your feedback right quick on just some ideas, because while the bed is off, it would be super simple to update the suspension, do some work on the rear end, maybe do something with the brakes, I don't know. I also want to know what you guys think about doing a video on a static dropping the truck. Nothing crazy, maybe like two inches in front, three inches in the back, just something super simple that would give the truck a better stance. That's kind of the theme of this project. I want it to be simple at this time and save the crazy for the Crew Cab S10 and the 240SX when I dive back into that. So let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see. This is looking much better. Before going any further, I decided to pull the truck outside and give everything a thorough wash. Now that I have water at the shop, I can try to eliminate some mess when I start taking things apart. Understandably, for a 30-year-old truck, the underside was pretty dirty, but nothing a couple bottles of all-purpose and a pressure washer couldn't handle. Plus, you can better see just how clean this frame is. There's actually quite a bit of factory undercoating still on it. You have your typical surface corrosion here and there, but there's no major rust, no pitting. What's here can be easily cleaned and repainted, so everything's gonna look fantastic when it's time to get all this back together. Next up, I'll start taking all of this apart. First things first, gotta get all these old hoses off so I can run down to O'Reilly and pick up a new set. The hoses, filler neck, electrical, and ground are all disconnected. Now I can start dropping the tank. Thankfully, there's not a lot of gas in there. Otherwise, you'll probably have to siphon it out because it's a rather large item, obviously. It's strapped in back here and up front there. There's a plastic guard right in front that has to be taken off as well. So it's just a matter of undoing a bunch of bolts and carefully dropping it.
so here's what we're looking at. It's a pretty big difference between the new tank and the old tank. Honestly, I think the old tank is fine. It's not damaged or rusted, but I'm pretty sure this truck had been sitting for quite a while and that gas in there had fermented because this thing smelled like pure turpentine. But I was gonna take it somewhere to get cleaned and refreshed, but by the time all of that effort was done and the money was spent, it just made more sense for me to get a brand new tank, especially since O'Reilly had it in stock. They actually had the fuel filler neck in stock too. I had to order the sending unit, took a few days to get here but it's all looking really nice and I'm looking forward to getting it all back in the truck. There's various length hose. I definitely don't need that much. I got a little extra for the future. Bunch of new hose clamps. I did want to mention though if you were just replacing the sending unit there's a lock ring that holds it in place. You'll see it when I put everything back together but when you undo that lock ring don't use like a hammer and a screwdriver get yourself some brass punches they're non marring and they don't spark otherwise you know you're, you're dealing with fuel here and if you accidentally make a spark you could cause a fire so just be mindful get yourself some of these do it right the first time before I start putting all this stuff back together I'm gonna go ahead and start restoring the frame Thankfully, there's no major rust as far as pinning and scaling. Everything that you see is very superficial. It could basically be sanded down in just two to three passes. I'm gonna restore the frame in stages because there's a lot of other things that I wanna take off, like the rear suspension, for example, just so I can get really good coverage and make sure the frame not only looks really good, but it's protected for the years to come. Of course, there's multiple ways to go about doing this, restoring the frame, getting rid of the rust and all that good stuff, but because there's not a whole lot of bad stuff going on here, I'm gonna sand everything down, get it nice and smooth, and then put a rust inhibitor on it to stop the rust in its tracks. After it's all cured, I'm gonna spray on some self-etching primer to make sure the rubberized truck bed liner that I'll be putting on the frame has a good surface to bite into. With everything nice and dry, I'm gonna finish it off with engine enamel with ceramic. It's my favorite paint. It's got a satin gloss finish and it just looks really, really nice. All right, let's work on getting the new tank in the truck. I repainted the brackets. There's new insulators between the straps and the tank. I also cleaned up the plastic protector that goes on front, so everything is looking awesome. Now let's install the new sending unit. Fast forward a little bit and we are done. I went ahead and connected the last remaining hoses, got brand new hardware on there, got the electrical and ground connected. I also installed a new fuel filter. I was gonna film that too, but being that the truck is on the ground, it was already tight enough space to work with down there instead of trying to film at the same time. So that's all done. Everything's looking really nice. All I gotta do now is fill this thing up with some gas and see if it'll fire up. All right, let's see what happens. Making some noise back there, it's a good sign. All right! Woohoo! Try 
truck runs fantastic. I am so excited this worked out the way it did. This is going to be a lot of fun to work on. Everything's looking good back here. No leaks. Pump's operating just as it should. Well everyone, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like below and if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. There's a lot more content where that came from and be sure to hit that little notification bell so you can get notified of new uploads. Obviously, I'm pumped about this truck. I hope you guys are as at least half as excited as I am to share and experience the journey of restoring this truck. There's a lot of things that need to be done, which means plenty of opportunities for video. If you have any specific specific ideas, don't forget to drop them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for the support. And of course, a big thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for their continued support with the channel. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.